My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by Be Quiet, Cable Mod, Vertigear, and EVGA. Go ahead and check out the links below for more info. We're at the ASUS booth now, checking out all the cool, fun stuff they've got on display. And I was uh, walking by here with uh, with good old Gary, an awesome representative here at ASUS, and uh, he, he showed me this first. I was like, show me the best thing you have. And he brought me to this X399 motherboard. Yes, that's right, X399. We've been taking a look at uh, quite a few X299 boards on the Intel side this year at Computex so far, but this is the first X399 AMD board that we've seen from anyone here at the event. This is the ROG Zenith Extreme. It's going to be supporting AMD's really, really, really highly anticipated Threadripper, which is going to be a ridiculous, ridiculous multi-core and thread CPU. Actually, you can see this, they've actually opted for a, a ball grid array, or BGA, in terms of their socket. This is going to be socket uh, TR4, I believe is the name of it. And it's actually comprised, you can see that it's, it's it's really long, it's not exactly perfectly square, so it is basically just going to be two CPUs or two dies fused together on one motherboard. I mean, this is basically reminiscent of a, of a, of a, of a server board, for example, but um, it's got this sort of gaming swagger to it, if, if you will. RGB LEDs right up here and on the chipset itself. You've got plenty of PCIe slots for, uh, I'm not going to give away how many PCIe lanes we're actually going to be getting on, uh, on this particular platform that is still under NDA, but rest assured, it will be a lot. Oh wait, let me summon the powers of wifey sauce. Woo, do it, do it honey. Uh, beautiful, all right, now we can see. So uh, what I was saying is apart from the, uh, the eight dim slots, you've also got a ninth one. That's going to be for an expansion, uh, sort of an expansion card or I should just say a little PCB that'll go in here for the DIMM.2 support, uh, supporting up to two M.2 SSDs, which is pretty handy. Uh, it also frees up a little bit more space on the PCB for other fun stuff, like the PCIe uh, slots and things like that. Obviously, you're gonna get support here for the uh, digital RGB, addressable RGB strips, uh, straight on the motherboard, as well as this included 10 gigabit ethernet expansion card, so that's really nice. And the last tidbit of information that I can reveal about this board today is that it will be sporting 802.11 AD, Wi-Fi. That's right, AD as in dog, not AC. This is going to be a faster standard that uh, should theoretically give you a bit more bandwidth on the wireless connection. Moving on to the Intel X299 stuff. Here we have the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme, which uh, does look very extreme indeed. I actually had Wi-Fi sauce turn the light off just so we can see the unique R RGB effect that we've got here. Sort of a, a translucent effect going across the uh, little shield here. The shield is covering just all the all the little gaps between the, uh, P the four PCIe Gen 3 slots. The chipset looks very nice. It's transitioning between the colors relatively smoothly. And the sidebar, you get a light, a light bar on the side right there, which is probably one of the best implementations I've seen on a motherboard. Another lighting zone here right in the middle, Republic of Gamers. Looks very nice, very nice. And then one last lighting zone up here in the top left corner by your rear I.O. Nice big old X2 or 2066 socket. And just as we saw with the X399 board, you do get a DIMM.2 slot as well, so you could connect up to two M.2 SSDs. All right, guys, we are taking a look at the ROG Zephyrus. This is rocking either a GTX 1070 or a GTX 1080 with uh, NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX Max-Q design, which essentially lowers the TDP quite significantly on these full desktop graphics cards. So for the 1080, you can go as low as 90 watts TDP, which would theoretically improve thermals and battery life. Exactly, kind of the, uh, the the ultimate combo that you want for a super thin gaming laptop. You can see it's pretty much we've entered like ultrabook thin territory. It's super portable, and you've got a ton of space here. This is really where the cooling solution is probably going to be uh, for your GPU and your CPU. We've got a 7700 HQ. It is a mobile uh, CPU. However, of course, full fledged desktop GPU. Once again, um, you got a very nice uh, keyboard here that Wifey Sauce is demonstrating for us. Fully backlit. The keys are not mechanical, but they feel really good and tactile. There is uh, also a small trackpad on the right. It's not too big, which I don't mind too much since most gamers are probably going to be connecting a mouse anyway. However, this does function also as a 10 key number pad if you want to do some data entry, something like that. The screen itself is basically one of the centerpieces of this entire device. It's a 15.6 inch screen, 1920 by 1080 resolution, IPS, it looks absolutely beautiful, and it also supports 120 hertz with G-Sync. Oh my goodness, it looks amazing. I think we're playing the uh, the latest Mass Effect on here right now, and it just looks absolutely cool. Uh, the other thing is that it's anti-glare, so matte finish, even though there are a ton of lights here at the convention, you can still see the screen perfectly fine, clear as 
as day. Also, one of my favorite things about this is that uh, ventilation is always kind of scary on, on, on laptops. It's not always the best and, and not the most well implemented. If you actually uh, open, when you open up the, uh, the lid here, the entire laptop sort of rises and it kind of opens up the back plate. The entire back plate gets separated from the unit itself and there's just a ton more ventilation right underneath. Uh, so you're actually getting fresh intake from the sides of the laptop as opposed to the very bottom. So if you happen to be putting this on like a, a softer, you know, not, not nearly as flat surface, let's say you leave it on the bed for a second or on the carpet, God forbid, um, you can rest assured that the ventilation is going to be a bit better since you're, you're not taking it from the very bottom. Very, very cool stuff here. As far as pricing and availability, you can expect one of these to ship in the next coming months. And pricing is obviously going to depend on the tier of hardware package you get. You can either get a GTX 1080 with a 512 gig SSD for around $26.99, I believe was the price. And uh, the GTX 1070 option with a 256 gig SSD is going to be a couple hundred bucks less. Stay tuned for this thing. It's going to be awesome. Once again, it's the ROG Zephyrus. All right, guys, you think some of the stuff you've seen so far has been pretty impressive here at the ASUS booth? Well, right here we have the next generation of revolutionary external graphics card. Just look at how small and tiny this amazing piece of... I've just been informed that this is actually a 4K Blu-ray player uh, with RGB lighting, no less. So um, forgive me for that mistake. This is a revolutionary graphics card that you should all be very interested in. But um, I, I, don't think I, I don't think we can top RGB Blu-ray player for today. So I'm just going to call it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks to my sponsors, Be Quiet, Vertigear, Cable Mod, and EVGA for making this trip possible. Be sure to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, guys. And check out the links in the description below. Have a good one. I'm getting the hell out of here. Peace.